guys, my name is Michael Watson and today I'll be teaching you how to use the compressor audio effect in Ableton Live. Okay, so a quick overview of the compressor here. You've got your compressor, you've got three different viewing options, and you've also got the option to sidechain, which is what I've done now, or not. So I'm going to quickly talk about the layout of this compressor and the different options available to you, and then I'm going to go into detail about how these options work, and I've got a couple of samples set up to act as useful examples for the certain compressor modes. So first of all, a compressor reduces gain for signals above a settable threshold. So for instance, if I'm listening to audio over here, let's have a listen to this. Now in this graph, this is the audio signal, and I can see here what the compressor is doing. And basically, if signals are above this orange line, which you can set, then the compressor actually begins to reduce the signal at those points, as you can see. So this orange line is your threshold, which you can change in a variety of ways. I'll get to that just now. But compression reduces the levels of peaks, which opens up more headroom and allows the overall signal to be turned up as a result and this gives the signal a higher average level so once you've compressed the peaks like you've just seen you're now going to have more space in your mix so you can actually turn up the whole volume at the end and this is why people say that using compression can increase your loudness even though you're squashing certain signal bits. That in itself isn't making anything louder, it's the fact that the squashing enables you to now turn up the volume afterwards because of all this increased headroom. And this gives the signal a higher average level, which results in a sound that is subjectively louder and punchier than an uncompressed signal. Okay, so now just looking at this compressor, if you go to audio effects, go to compressor and you can drag it down, this might be what you're seeing. Now it is the same device, um, you can change your view mode down here, you've got three options. And all three options show you different things, for instance, this one on the left here is your collapsed view and it shows only your essential controls, your threshold, how much is being compressed and your output. It's this yellow thing over here is showing me how much compression is going on and then your incoming and your outgoing values. The second option over here shows you your transfer curve and this shows your input level on the horizontal axis and your output level vertically but it also shows you the knee. So this little circle over here is showing you where your signal is lying at and you can kind of see the compressor movement. This circle over here is your threshold. I can actually click and drag and change your threshold as you can see on the left. And then your knee, you get these two little lines over here. They're kind of hard to see. But if I go to my knee parameter over here and I change it by just pulling and dragging, or you can numerically put in a value, you can see that they widen or get narrower. I'll explain what a knee is shortly. And then your final view option over here is your activity view. And this shows the level of the input signal in light gray. So this guy down here. And uh, this lighter orange signal over here shows your compression movement and it kind of helps you visualize what the compressor is doing. This dark orange line is your threshold value and uh, you can toggle between output of here and GR, which is your gain reduction view. Now in gain reduction view, I explained what you're seeing and in output you can actually see the resulting output signal. So this light gray one over here is what the signal was going to be before the compressor. And this one with the outline is now what the signal looks like after compression. If you're unfamiliar with compressors, this is a really great way to help you visualize how the compressor works and what it does. You can see the lower I pull my threshold, you can see actually how the signal just gets squashed more and more. Now you may have also noticed that these different three options have different perimeter options of here. Most of them are kind of the same. You can see the knee, the look, and the envelope at the bottom are the same. And your collapse view really shows only the essentials, as well as your knee. I left the knee out earlier. Okay, now this gray bit around the compressor, you've got your makeup, which when activated will automatically compensate the output level as the threshold and the ratio values change instead of you manually changing the output volume. You've got your peak RMS and expand mode. I'll explain all of these in detail. You've got your dry and wet knob, which I hope you're familiar with by now. Then you've also got your ratio, which determines how heavily the compressor clamps down on that signal. You've got your attack and release, which determine how fast the compressor reacts and how slowly the compressor then then stop squashing down on the signal. You've got your auto release, which I'll also explain. And then if you go to this little triangle and you click it, you've got 
your sidechain options. So you've got sidechain, you've got your little preview knob, you've got your EQ, which is really cool if you only want certain frequencies from your sidechain input signal to be used as a trigger to compress. Okay, so that was the overview. Let me go into a little bit more detail now. A compressor's two most important parameters are your threshold and your compression ratio. And your threshold is a dB value and it determines at which point your compressor now needs to start compressing your signal. So if this is my threshold over here, any signal that gets above this point over here needs to be compressed. And the threshold works in conjunction with your ratio over here to determine where slash when the compression needs to take place. So anytime after this threshold, and then how hard your compressor needs to compress, and that's determined by this ratio. So your ratio parameter sets the ratio between the input and the output signal. For example, at a ratio of 1 to 1, it means you're keeping the signal exactly the same. It's like your compressor is being bypassed. Let's say you've got a ratio of 3 over here. This means that if a signal above the threshold increases by 3 dB, the compressor output will increase only by 1 dB. So for every 3 dB that you go over the threshold, you're only going to hear 1 dB over the threshold, which obviously means if you increase this number, like say 7, now you're saying for every 7 dB over the threshold, you're only going to hear 1, which means you're clamping down a lot more. And so the effect of your compressor is going to be a lot more drastic, but a low ratio is going to be subtle. For instance, if you've got like 1.1 to 1, you're hardly going to hear a difference. It's super subtle, and you probably only use that to maybe smooth out certain bits of your compressor. Now let's talk about your attack and release. And for that, I'm actually going to show you a side chaining example. So over here, let's solo this track. I've got a bass sample. And uh, I'm going to be side chaining it to this drum sample. So now what I would be doing is at all the peaks of this drum loop, I wanted to actually compress the bass sample so that you have gaps in the bass sample where you can now hear the kick drum come through. This will create a pump-like effect. So to do that, I've got your compressor put in here. You've got to open up this little triangle over here and enable sidechain, and then you've got to choose where your audio is coming from. So I want it to come from D and B. D, so drum and bass drums, which I've got, and then you can choose whether it's pre, post, effects or post master and then this gain knob over here determines how much of the signal you want in your compressor so if your gain is low then your compressor is only going to get a small feed of your drum signal in which case it's probably going to be a bit harder for it to compress based on that signal so i like to keep my gain higher and then rather bring it a bit lower but that's just my personal preference and then your dry wet knob is like all other dry wet knobs it determines how heavily you want this new compressed signal to be mixed with your actual signal coming out here. So at dry, you're essentially bypassing the sidechain, and at wet, you've completely sidechained your signal. Now on my actual drum and bass track, I'm just going to put the volume down because I don't want to hear the drums, I just want to hear the bass sample with the compression. You will need this drum sample playing though, so let's give it a go. If you now bring up the volume of this, You can see how it kind of creates a groove with each other. You can hear the bass when there are no drums, and you can hear drums instead of the bass when there's drum hits. And just to explain the settings I have, I have a very high ratio over here so that it really clamps down on the bass when it gets the feed from the drums. I've got a very short attack because I want it to compress immediately. And I've got a fairly slow release. I've also changed my look ahead over here so that the compressor actually looks ahead into the signal so it knows in advance whether to compress or not, otherwise the compression is going to be a little bit late. So you can change your look ahead to 0, to 1 or to 10 milliseconds, and on 0 milliseconds your compressor isn't looking ahead, which means there will be a very small amount of time where a signal above the threshold is going to get through the compressor uncompressed because the computer can't work backwards. But to kind of make it sound like it's worked backwards, you can make the compressor look ahead in the signal, which it can do because it's got the whole file loaded over here. And then it can predict when the compressor needs to activate, which means it can have a faster response time. Now I've also played with the knee over here, which you can see over here, and I'm going to explain to you now what the knee is. So I've got a very small knee, as you can see. It's very narrow. So what the knee does is that if you've got signals that are approaching the threshold, if you've got a hard knee, so something that looks like this, like an angle and a very narrow knee, then the compressor is only going to compress after the threshold. 
pretty much. Well, that's if you've got absolutely no knee. But if you broaden the knee like this, then you're telling the compressor, all right, the signal is coming close to the threshold. So if it's within the threshold range, which is now the knee, you can begin to compress it a little bit, which means the effect won't be as drastic. It'll be a little smoother. Now, if you're struggling to hear the difference, try and listen to the snare. On the hard knee, it sounds a little bit even like a little white noise sample. Whereas with the knee, you can hear a slight tail, like a little bit of reverb afterwards. Same with the drums, they just sound a little harder. So now going back to the sidechain example, so you can generate a bunch of kicks in a MIDI file and turn it into an audio file and then use that as your sidechain input and you can have great control of which drum hits you want to use as your sidechain input signal. But if you've got a drum loop like I have here, which has low and high frequencies and say I only want to use the kick, then you can enable EQ over here to be more specific about which incoming signals you want to use to trigger your compressor. So I've got a low pass filter over here and um, I activate this little headphone icon. I'll be able to listen to my sidechain input signal and only my sidechain input signal. So I've got a low pass and only the low frequencies coming through. Now as I up the frequency, you'll start hearing more. And you can sidechain based on only these signals. You can also change the cue. And this will set the bandwidth of the sidechain EQ. Okay, now what does this auto do? When you've got auto release enabled, then the compressor automatically adjusts the release time based on the incoming audio. So instead of relying on this release knob, which is now grayed out, your compressor will at higher, shorter peaks have a quicker release time. And when the peaks are smaller and longer, the release time will be slower. And this just helps kind of monitor the compressor behavior a little bit so that you don't get weird stutter effects. Now you've also got your envelope over here. If you go into the second or the third view over here, you can choose between linear compression and logarithmic compression. These are two different envelope follower shapes that offer further options for how the device measures and responds to signal levels. In linear mode, the speed of the compression response is determined entirely by the attack and release values. And in logarithmic or log mode, sharply compressed peaks will have a faster release time than less compressed material. This is a little bit more like your auto-release settings, and this can result in a smoother and less noticeable compression than lin mode. Just be aware that if you're in collapsed view over here, you can't see that switch, the log lin envelope follower switch, so you've got to be in one of these two views. And finally, you've got three modes over here. You've got peak, RMS, and expand, and these determine your compressor's mode of operation. With peak selected, the compressor reacts to short peaks within a signal. You can see that the peaks above the threshold get compressed in a very peak-like fashion. And RMS mode causes the compressor to be less sensitive to the very short peaks and compress only when the incoming level has exceeded the threshold for a slightly longer time, which is not happening at all now. So if I lower the threshold, you can see it reacts to the bigger peaks. It's a lot smoother as opposed to this peak, which is more pronounced and precise. In expand mode, it's kind of like backwards compression. Instead of compressing the peaks, it will actually bring them out even more. So every time your incoming signal goes above the threshold, it actually brings it out a bit more. And this is great if you want to create punchier drums. So one note of warning, this makeup gain control occurs before the output gain controls. If you've got makeup enabled, your compressor is going to compress and it'll automatically now make up the gain so that your whole signal was roughly at the same level it was before your compressor happened. Can you hear it's a lot quieter without it? But now this happens before your output stage. So if you now up your makeup gain manually over here, before you've hit makeup and then you hit makeup again, you might get really loud signals. So just be very careful when you're playing with your makeup gain. 
So get to know your compressor, play around with it and train your ear. I would recommend starting with a side chain, just because it's so easy to hear what's happening. And really practice on some drum samples, hear the difference that the compressor has on a type of snare, type of kick, what a punchy kick sounds like, what a very compressed snare sounds like. Some other tips with a compressor are that if you're mixing dialogue to background music, you'll always want the dialogue to stick out. In which case, you can sidechain compress the background music with the input signal being that dialogue. That way the signal will automatically be attenuated when the dialogue starts. And then sidechaining in dance music is really popular. You may have recognized the drum and bass effect over here. There are also some really cool creative applications with a compressor. You can begin to use parallel compression or couple it with multiband dynamics. So if you invest in learning one tool well over the next month, I suggest you begin to learn a compressor. It doesn't have to be this one, but this one's kind of a fairly nice one because it's got all the essential controls and a little bit more as well. Thanks for watching. I'll be doing a video like this on all the other compressors as well in Ableton Live, as well as all the other audio effects. So if this has been helpful for you, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.